This is the Pixel 2, and normally it runs Android, which it's based on Linux, but what if we just skip the middleman and ran Linux on this thing itself? Bye, Windows. So the version of Linux we're going to be installing on this Pixel 2 is Ubuntu Touch, which I, I think it's really the only Linux distribution made for this phone. Unfortunately, this was never finished and is still in a beta state, with the last release being in April of 2023, but still, it'll be fun to take a look at. If the device is running an Android version above 9.0, you have to downgrade to the last 9.0 release. Oh, okay, well, hi Windows. Restoring back is pretty easy, we just gotta use the Android Flash tool, and uh, wait, how do I change? Oh, there we go. More releases, Android 9, and install. Uh, wait, one second. Yeah, you're trying to lock the bootloader on me. I'm not going to let that happen. All right, now we just got to wait for that to install and download. Okay, and we are successfully downgraded. N no clue why they wanted me to do that, but sure. Oh, and they have a Mac installer too. Perfect. Very in-depth. Really, Apple? <laughs> really? Maybe you should try out Asahi Linux on this thing. Can I use my computer now? We will walk you through the installation process. With developer mode enabled, connect your phone, tablet, or smartwatch to the computer. Uh, it's in fastboot right now. Should work, right? Seems like it's not finding it, so select device manually. Uh... Yeah, Google Pixel 2. What operating system do you want to install? Uh, there's more choice- Oh, okay, no, it's just the one to touch. Okay, so we got the stable release. We got- Wait, isn't there like- No, oh, okay, they're all the same version, so yeah, I guess we'll go with that. We'll wipe all our data and we'll flash them using Fastboot, because, I mean, we're in Fastboot right now. With the device still at the Fastboot mode screen, go to Recovery. All right, uh, Recovery mode. Just says waiting for a device. Uh, when it boots, it'll find it, right? Ooh, there we go. Okay, we're actually getting somewhere. Yeah, you can connect. Piss off, Android file transfer. And looks like everything's installing correctly. Uh, that's kind of like seamless for Linux, you know? I was expecting to throw my Mac out the window. This is just working. This is this Linux? Ubuntu Touch successfully installed. Does the phone work? Uh, still booting. Android file transfer keeps popping up with new windows. It's like, what kind of freak device did you connect to this Mac? Phone's done updating. Looks like it's uh, rebooting again. And yep, there we go. We've just upgraded to no app support. English United States. No SIM card installed. Can this thing even make calls? It's finding my Wi-Fi network. Seems like the, the guy who made this like fully fleshed it out, actually. The keyboard looks pretty much like your standard Android keyboard, but what's this like arrow thing at the bottom? Oh, swipe to move cursor. Oh, these are like... Yeah, it's like extra settings for your uh, for your keyboards. So it's like a more desktop experience. That's pretty cool. Lock screen, create new password. Oh, you know, speaking of passwords, I wonder if the fingerprint sensor on this thing is going to work. It's actually not letting me use 1111 as my password. I guess I got to do like six digits. Eight? What, what do you mean password too short? How much is enough? Oh, okay, that message is for the top one, and it's got to be at least eight digits. That's that's pretty good, actually. Android you should probably follow suit. Welcome to Ubuntu. You are ready to use your device now. Oh, it's it's got, like, the sidebar it has on the GNOME version. Wait, is this just GNOME for mobile? Swipe from the top edge to access notifications and quick settings. Ooh, this is, this is interesting. So you have, like, a quick bar up top, and you click on it, and it gives you, like, more settings for that specific thing. This is kind of like a wasted opportunity. Why didn't you show me like all the Bluetooth settings right here instead of having me to go to like a different menu? Long swipe from the left edge to open the application drawer. Oh, okay, so that's like your launch pad. Swipe from the right edge to view your open apps. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, first things first, let's hit up settings. Fingerprint ID. Add fingerprint. Oh, this thing actually works? Yeah, I'm just tapping my fingerprint on this and it's actually scanning. All right, all done. Does, uh, does it actually work? Oh, you know, that's because I didn't hit OK, right? I just hit OK, it's still not working. Can, do I do it here? Wait, how do you unlock it? Oh, I see, okay, you, you gotta actually enable the fingerprint. Oh wait, that, does that become your only method? Oh no, you can still enter your normal password along with it. And just kind of confusing design here, but eh, whatever. So wait, how do you go back in this operating system? Is it, no, that's to switch apps. This is to open apps. All right, I, I guess I just gotta close settings. What's Libertine? 
Welcome to Ubuntu Classic Application. Oh, can you run like full Linux apps on this thing? Ubuntu Xenial. Z okay, that's probably like some old release. Yep, 2016 version of Ubuntu. All right, uh, while that downloads, let's play with some other apps on this thing. All right, uh, what's the calendar look like? Pretty nice layout. I just don't like how it doesn't highlight what day it currently is. Also, these animations, they take way too long. Uh, okay, what about the camera? Oh, that's a really good feature for privacy. It asks you every single time if some app can use your camera. Yeah, I don't think UI can get more basic than this. You got record, shoot, and flip camera around. That's it. Do you need anything else? No, oh, but there is also like a menu down here. Yeah, there you go. And you get like a bunch of other settings. Could use some labels, but I guess the image is good enough. Oh, okay. So yeah, you tap on the button. It gives you a bunch of options to pick from. Pretty neat. Oh, and I just figured out the multitasking on this thing. If you swipe to the right, it jumps you to your last used app. Clock wants to access your current location. It doesn't just like automatically give it to the system apps. It actually like checks everything. That's Again, really good for privacy. You got a world clock, stopwatch, and a timer. Please set a time. Oh, you can actually- oh, that's- that's pretty cool design. You can also get your alarms by swiping up from the bottom on the world clock section, and I I'm curious, what are some of the alarm sounds on this thing? That's the phone on the maximum volume, too. Doesn't really get very loud. External drives, and it's a picture of an SD card, which- that's kind of funny, because the, the Pixel 2 doesn't take SD cards. Oh, okay, yeah, the app is just completely empty. A great app. What's the file manager look like? You can get a pretty basic view of some folders, but if you authenticate, you can get more stuff. Uh, is this, like, hidden files? Can't use my fingerprint here. Oh, okay, you just get access to the desktop, publics, and templates folder, which I have no idea what they were used for, but desktop... It if you add something to this, does it show up on the home screen? Alright, we created a test file. A Wait, how do I go home? I, I have no idea, actually. Users will land in the Ubuntu Touch Experience at the background, not the desktop, which implies you may put things on it. Yeah, that's that's exactly what I thought, actually. So if there's no way to go back to the background, th what's the point of the desktop folder? You do also get full file system access, which, I mean, you would expect on a Linux distribution. Wonder what the messaging app is like. I mean, it's only the most important app on a phone. Aside from, you know, the phone app. Compose a new message by swiping up from the bottom of the screen. Oh, okay, that's, that's kind of handy. We could send a message, but I don't have a SIM card in this thing, so yeah, you know what, just give me a minute. I'm gonna head to Target and grab one. Ugh, you know what I'm thankful for this November? Best Buy. Seems like it found the carrier, but can I actually get a- Oh yeah, I have a full bar actually. And can confirm, I just received a text message actually. So yeah, Ubuntu Touch on the Pixel 2. You can get a reception, send and receive text messages, but- uh, Wait, m my reception just died? And it's back. Okay, yeah, this is definitely a little finicky. I, I wouldn't trust it if you needed to make a 911 call. What about the web browser on this thing? Now this better be good, because a majority of what you're gonna be doing on this phone is gonna be in the web browser, because like I said, not a lot of native app support, so I hope you like web apps. Let's see how well it works with a search. Okay, a bit sluggish, but pretty usable. Same goes for it loading the website. Unfortunately, there is a bit of input lag when you're swiping between the pages, but aside from that, it's it's usable. YouTube videos load instantly on this thing, though, which is a good surprise. Oh, that's pretty cool. In landscape mode, you pull down from the right side and you get like a minimized view of your notification shade. If I leave the app, will it keep YouTube playing, though? Mmm, yeah, nah, it kills the app in the background. We do have like an app store on here, an uh, open store. M maybe we can download a better web browser? And the, uh, the app store won't launch. Alright, first reboot. It'll work now, right? There we go. We got, a uh, new and updated apps. We got some, uh, games, toolbox, more games, uh, and more utilities. I go into utilities to try to find a web browser, and immediately one of the first apps that pops up is Autism Planner. How could you tell this is a Linux phone? Oh, that's pretty cool. There's a Switch My Slot app, so you can, like, switch from, uh, slot A to slot B. So, yeah, hypothetically, I could install just normal Android on slot B and, like, dual boot this thing. That's pretty cool. Ubuntu Tweak Tool. Oh, I guess that's, like, uh, this version of good lock, huh? Oh, that's, that's scary. This app has access to restricted parts of your system and all of your data? Sure, why not? Apparently, Wadroid is supported on this as well, and, uh, there was a web- Oh, wait. 
System wide ad blocker for Ubuntu Touch. I think this is actually better than just having an ad blocker in the web browser. This one down here was updated in October this year, so I, I guess I'll go with this one. Here's an ad with it off, and let's turn it on and see if it makes a difference. Oh, okay, and the ad's even bigger this time. All right, I guess that doesn't work, unfortunately. If you click on the ad itself, though, it, it does block it, so it, I guess like you get some points, A for effort. Using Ubuntu Tweak Tool, can we at least make the web browser stick around in the background? Prevent app suspension. All right, so let's switch apps to the Tweak Tool. It's on Android 10, so I'm wondering. And yeah, there you go. You got a very janky YouTube backward play, but it does work, and all you gotta do is just go back here to switch the video back. Works with the screen off too, just uh, no controls for it. So just, just mute the video if your headphones pop out. Using the Tweak Tool, you can make it show your battery percentage on the panel, which that's, that's not default. What's usage mode? Staged windowed. Ooh, we're getting into the good stuff. So this is, yeah, it's just, li it's literally just Linux. It's a desktop environment on your phone. This is really cool. That permanent bar is kind of annoying. Let's just auto hide it. There we go. Now we get all our screen real estate. I would even dare to say the multitasking. It's, uh, it's getting to one UI level. I mean, being able to just go to the side and flip all your apps open like this and pull up the window, uh, this needs to be developed, okay? Guys, donate. Please donate. Unfortunately, once you make an app full screen, uh, there is controls like in the upper right corner, but it triggers like the notification shade, so good luck using that. Oh, but yeah, in YouTube, it was the other way around, so maybe we could just like... There we go. Now we got full control. There is no snap window feature, though, unfortunately, so you just gotta make do by resizing it yourself. What about that custom container to run, like, the desktop Linux apps on this thing? No packages are installed. Uh, could we get Brave on this thing? I want the release version. Is this supposed to, like, redirect me to something? Okay, we got the ARM file downloaded. This should work, right? It installs for a tiny bit, and then it just, like, deletes itself, so I guess this is a no-go. I mean, do we even need that if we just have, like, a terminal built in? I mean, this is already running Linux, right? Let's do our updates first. Oh, okay, I guess we are fully updated. At least the website gives us install instructions, so we can just do these commands, and maybe that'll work. How do I paste again? Oh, right, yeah, I bring this up. Oh, I accidentally hit, like, a button. I, I got a backspace. How do I go down again? Done. Backspace, swipe up, paste, done, enter. And I typed absolutely nothing. I guess portrait mode is a better way for doing this. And uh, tell you the truth, I'm kind of surprised that it pushes the apps up with the keyboard. That's that's a good feature I wasn't expecting. Oh, you know what? It's not pasting because I got to do that control shift V thing on the terminal. Uh, is there like a way to disable that? Uh, I'm not doing that on a phone. Paste, enter shortcut. With what keyboard? Fine, <laughs> you want to play hardball? I can match you. This is very practical, okay? Oh yeah, now we're computing. Beat this Samsung Dex. And there's no curl on this thing, so there goes that idea. I mean, we already downloaded the file to throw into Libertine, so why don't we just like download it from the file manager, right? Open with another app, open store, install unknown app. What, what do you mean installation failed? It's the correct architecture, it's Debian, wait, what? Add archive, okay, here we go. Oh, and there is actually window snapping, just only with the keyboard and mouse, which, I mean, I guess this is not made for touch input, so it, it's fine. Paste this in there and that might be it. All right, so now that we added that, will it find Brave Browser? Hmm. All right, well, unless I can get into Libertine from the terminal, uh, I don't think there's much else I can do here, so I'm just gonna move on. As for one of the other few things I wanted to try, uh, Wagedroid, seems like this is the app to get, so yeah, let's install it. You are about to use an experimental Wagedroid installer, supported devices, uh... I mean, the Pixel 2, it's, it's not an XL, but it should work, right? Also, uh, big fan of the Google Plus logo in the corner for some reason. Uh, I can click on it, you know, doesn't do anything. Good app. Installation complete. All right, let's check it out. Uh, is that is that supposed to happen? Wagedroid Market does the exact same thing as well. So, uh, there's a Wagedroid stop. I, I guess we could use that. All right, and then we can try launching it again. Okay, same result. Pseudo Wagedroid initialize. Okay, already initialized. Pseudo Wagedroid container start. Okay, it's already running, so how do we call it? Wagedroid session start. Oh, it's not Wayland. This is X11, that's why. All right, screw it. Restart, maybe. Who the hell is calling me? I haven't even made this number public yet. Even after the restart, still not working. And I mean, this is based on an Ubuntu version from 2016, so Wayland. My Linux knowledge is limited, so uh, this is where I get off, okay? I'm done. Before we're done, though, 
maybe? Is there is there any chance? Oh, okay, yeah, just immediately quit, so well. So that's about it for Ubuntu Touch on the Pixel 2. Now, this is honestly some of the most fun I've had with the mobile phone in a long time. Playing with One UI's multitasking features in that video was, uh, it was fun, but this is, uh, it's a whole nother beast. There, you can do so much with Linux. Now, this is actually an outdated version of Ubuntu Touch. There's like a newer one going around on UV ports, and I think I should actually get a newer device just to keep playing with this. Let's see, Ubuntu Touch, devices... The Fairphone 5 is currently the best supported device with Ubuntu Touch. Oh, okay, cool. How much is it? $800? No, 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 no. So I've done my research, and I'm gonna go with the Google Pixel 3a for my Ubuntu Touch phone. Uh, two reasons. One, this is a pretty popular phone. I mean, this thing sold really well, so I can get some views on the experience video for this thing. And two, for the price of, like, under 80 bucks, this is pretty much the best you can get. I mean, there's no wire display output, which I, I really wish I could have. I'd really want to play with that, but the only things that really support it are the Fairphone 4 and 5, and... I'm not spending that kind of money on a Linux phone, all right? <laughs> Don't worry, though. I'm gonna get a ton of mileage out of the Pixel 3 I'm gonna order. I'm gonna use the phone and review it. I'm gonna install a custom ROM on it, and I'm gonna try Ubuntu Touch on it. It's gonna be a blast. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you later.